Gigabyte's X299 motherboard lineup features a range of options with support for Intel's Core X series CPUs. Boards like the Aorus X299 Gaming 7 are packed with useful features and support Optane memory, Thunderbolt 3, and USB 3.1 Gen 2. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! What's up guys, how's it going? And welcome to my monthly builds video for December 2017. Every month I come out with a couple parts lists that I share with you guys, I give you my suggestions for what I think are good choices when it comes to building a PC, if you're choosing your own parts. And uh, that is what this series is all about. I typically build one of the systems every month as well. So check out my builds playlist if you wanna see me actually assembling some stuff. For today, we're just gonna be going over parts lists. And uh, I wanted to point out that we're actually gonna be going over a couple of last month's part lists. I did them at the, towards the end of November um, and it's changed. It's shifted around just a little bit. I also want to point out that I usually have a, a straw poll for you guys to give feedback in. I'm not doing that this month simply because next month in January there's still a lot of stuff up in the air that I'm not really sure about. So I'm going to delay things. We'll do a reset when we come back to that. But uh, fear not, your feedback will again be part of my multi build series when that, when that happens. Now last month I had two builds, a $650 and a $1,150 builds, and they were both AMD based and they both had like swappable parts. So you could take some of the more expensive parts from the more expensive build and some of the less expensive parts from the less expensive build, swap them around to kind of find yourself a mid-range. Now because my recommendations this month haven't changed that mu much since last month, but some prices have, I'm gonna re I'm gonna go over those two builds one more time. We'll take a look at what has happened to pricing since then and also maybe some suggestions for those of you who are maybe a little uh, disillusioned with the with the PC, uh, <laughs> with building a PC and how much money it can, it's costing right now. So here is my $650 build, which is now uh, crept up to 700-ish dollars, and that's due to some of these products that were on sale for the Black Friday and Cyber Monday timeframe not being on sale anymore. So the Ryzen 3 1200, for example, was less than $100. In fact, you were able to get the 1300X for $99 a week or so ago. That's jumped back up to 109. Uh, the B350 mo motherboard that I had chosen for around 80 bucks is now up to 102. You can still find very viable B350 motherboards for around $80, so I would definitely check that out rather than going with this. In fact, let's see if I can swap that out real quick. Well, real quick and see uh, what's going on here with the B350 motherboard landscape. Uh, oh no, there's A320s in there. We have to filter those out. So here's your B350 board, starting at around 60 bucks, going up to around uh, 80, 90, creeping up into the $100 range just a little bit here. Um, I would personally recommend checking out the ASRock, uh, where did it go, the AB350, AB350M Pro 4? or the B350M Pro from ASRock uh, are both pretty solid boards when it comes to overclocking as well as not being crazy over crazy expensive. Again, Ryzen 3 prices have just crept back up a little bit again. I'd like to see these back under $100, but uh, keep your eye out for deals on those. There's that Gigabyte motherboard. It was a solid deal for the discount that it was that it had. Um, still a good board, but it's just a little bit more money now. So if you're on a strict budget, you might not be able to afford that. This Corsair memory kit is one that I've recommended a lot simply due to its uh, easy compatibility with Ryzen systems and definitely double check your memory and your motherboard's memory compatibility list before you choose your memory. I have been recommending memory that's 3000 or 3200 rated for Ryzen because you do get uh, some added uh, performance out of that, but you wanna make sure it's compatible. This kit definitely is. But when we get to the next build, uh, the kit that it actually updated that one with isn't. So uh, more on that in just a second. Now for storage, if you've been watching uh, these videos, I typically recommend a 250 gig SSD to get yourself started, uh, to get your operating system loaded on, and then find yourself a inexpensive or a hand-me-down used hard drive, pull one from an old system to add some, some more storage. And uh, thankfully this price has come down a bit. You can get a 256 gig SanDisk or a 240 gig a data for about $70. That's about 10 or $15 cheaper than uh, we were seeing a week or two ago. So that's not too bad at all. Barring of course, some individual sales that might've sold out quickly. So maybe we're seeing NAND prices come down just a little bit, who knows. Uh, for a video card, I still feel like the AMD cards are uh, just a tad overpriced. So if you're in the $200 to $250 range, the GTX 1060 is a good choice in there. But uh, bear in mind that the three gig you can get for about 50 bucks cheaper for about 200. Uh, the six gig, the cheapest you can get is around $260. 
definitely worth it for the six gig if you're considering anything beyond uh, 1920 by 1080 gameplay, if you're thinking about 1440 or that kind of thing. But for 1080, either of those cards will work just fine. Uh, for a case, we have about a $45-ish case, and the Masterbox 5 is a good option for that. Solid case, still fairly inexpensive. Uh, that's after a $10 rebate, of course. And there's other cases in the $55 range that you could argue about that might be better, but uh, pick whichever one you think looks best, because aesthetics, that's kind of where you can choose your aesthetics is when you're picking out your case. Uh, for a power supply, we have an 80 plus bronze rated unit from Corsair. It's only about $50. Uh, looks like it's out of stock at Amazon, but you can get it at Newegg right now. And I chose this one simply because it's 550 watt, which should uh, cover the jobs that the vast majority of computers need right now when it comes to uh, the amount of power that's required. And then it's also got, uh, it's not modular, but it does have all black cabling that's attached. So um, you're not gonna have any ugly looking ketchup and mustard cables. That's all for that uh, initial build. Again, it was about $650 last month. A little bit more expensive this month, but uh, there are still some deals going on since the beginning of December, and um, you know people are still buying stuff for the, the holidays and Christmas. So uh, keep your eye out for deals, I guess is what I'm saying, and um, lament the fact that you didn't purchase stuff last week if uh, the thing that you wanted that was on sale is no longer on sale. Next up, again, a rehash of November's is the $1,150 build, and that has crept up to $1,215, so about 65-ish dollars more. Some of these are still the same price, so this Ryzen 5 1600, uh, $190. It, it did dip down a little bit below that uh, in the past week or two, but uh, that's still a very good price for your 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5. Uh, this Azurac X370 board is still the same price, so it's still a pretty good deal for an X370 at $130. Uh, here's the parametric filter I used for the Corsair memory, so let's jump over to that. First off, look, there's your 1600 Only $190. Maybe that'll be... Uh, go to Micro Center if, uh, if you really want a deal on a CPU. They have a CPU and motherboard combos you can get usually 20 or 30 bucks off with. Uh, there's that Azurac motherboard. Look, it's got a $20 mail-in rebate if you get it at Newegg. And here's my parametric filter, which is one of the features from PC Part Picker, Part Picker uh, which is where I just told it, hey, uh, I want Corsair memory, I want it to be either 3000 or 3200 speed, and I want a 16 gig kit, two by eight gigs. Uh, if you filter those down, um, you might get the Corsair Vengeance LPX kit, um, or you might get the, for instance, the Vengeance LED kit. This kit is not, at least in my experience, you might want to double check again your motherboard compatibility. This, this is not as compatible with Ryzen as the other stuff, the standard Vengeance LPX kits. So do double check that and make sure if you're using the parametric filter or if you're going by my lists, always do a little bit of reality checking to make sure that your memory is going to be compatible. Moving right along, we have uh, storage. Again, I was looking at storage based on price per gigabyte as well as seeing what you could get if you're spending a little bit more. Now that 250 gig one was about $70. Uh, you got to pay about 50 bucks more to get yourself into that uh, double that that storage range, 480 to 500 gigs. But uh, for 130 dollars and a price per gig of 27 cents, the SSD plus 480 gig is a pretty good deal right now. But again, uh, you know if you're on the budget, you might not be able to afford that. But if you're spending a little bit more on your system, then definitely keep that in mind. Bit, bit, a little bit better price per gigabyte on the 500 gig versions. For video card for this uh, particular build, I've just chosen a GTX 1070, and I've chosen to get the cheapest one possible. And unfortunately, they're $420, which might make you reconsider. Like, if you're looking at a 1070 for $420, definitely might be worth it to pay 30 bucks more for a $450 GTX 1070 Ti which is closer in performance to a GTX 1080 than a 1070. So yeah, the 1070 deals might not be your best bang for the buck right now, um, but still, uh, I guess maybe check a Vega 56 as well. You can see a Vega 56 for 400 bucks and then go for that. Uh, rounding out this build, the case I had chosen with the, was the Eclipse P400, but $80 was the uh, price budget for the case. Uh, and then finally the power supply, which was about $65, and that is an 80 plus gold unit since this is a little bit more expensive uh, of a system, and again, the price for this entire system coming in at uh, $1,215, at least right now, according to PC Part Picker. Um, so you do have compatibility there, but again, if you're looking, for example, at the more budget build, the $700-ish dollar build, and you're like, oh, I want that, but I want, uh, I, want, I want the Ryzen 5 1600 instead of the Ryzen 3 1200, then you can pay an extra $80 and get that and swap it in. Part of the reason why I've recommended AM4 and why I've been recommending AMD builds right now is simply because they have an upgrade path. Uh, they have an upgrade path going into next year. AMD has promised AM4 is going to stick around. We're probably going to see Zen 2 CPUs launched on the same platform. 
I can't promise you that, but um, everything we've been told seems to indicate that. And uh, when you're comparing right now the actual raw CPU uh, performance that you get um, with Ryzen's six core and eight core processors compared to what you get on the mainstream Intel side, it's just kind of no contest uh, when it comes to bang for your buck. Okay, I've got one more build for you guys, and this one is definitely a gaming focused build. If you are gonna do other stuff besides gaming, which includes uh, maybe video editing, or if you're gonna do 3D animation, or if you're gonna be gaming and streaming at the same time, this might not be the most viable build. I would recommend going with that Ryzen 1600 build that we just covered moments ago. But this is actually a uh, Intel 7700K base system, and that is solely due to the fact that the 7700K can be had for a pretty decent discount if you compare it to what it was selling uh, for before uh, this most recent launch of the Coffee Lake stuff. So um, combine that with some reasonably pricey 270 boards, and you can get yourself a pretty powerful gaming system. Uh, you're going to have a quad-core 8-thread CPU, and then the uh, graphics card I've chosen for this is a GTX 1070 Ti. Of course, you could swap that for a 1070 or a 1080 if you wanted to spend a little bit less or a little bit more money, and then also get um, a little bit less or a little bit more GPU performance. But overall cost of this is around $1,250, so it's a little bit more expensive than that R5 1600 build that we just came across. But it does feature the i7 7700K, which is a really good overclocker and an excellent, excellent gaming uh, processor. So if you're going to pair this with a high-end graphics card, in uh, most situations you're going to be getting the most you can out of that high-end graphics card. And it's good to see that whereas the typical price of this is somewhere in the $340 to $350 range, uh, you can get it for around $290 right now. Again, less of a bargain when you compare it to some of the AMD stuff that's out there, but um, for Intel, uh, hardcore Intel users or people who, again, are just purely focused on gaming, it's still a good option. The CryRig H7 is a very good CPU cooler. Uh, it's pretty simple to install and does a very good job and looks nice to boot. So uh, less than $30 at uh, Newegg Marketplace right now. Uh, Asus Prime Z270-A motherboard, really solid motherboard. Just just look at them ratings available for less than $150 right now. You can even get a couple mail-in rebates for it, uh, and it's got support for like all all the good things, including a couple M.2 slots on there, as well as one M.2 slot that is also compatible with SATA. M.2 devices. Uh, more on that in just a second. I went to 2x8 gig memory kit for this. It's a little bit lower, slower speed memory because that's not going to impact your performance on the Intel platform as much as it will uh, on the AMD platform, at least with Ryzen. Uh, and memory prices are probably the main thing that's keeping these overall prices of these builds really high right now. So $145 is a good deal right now for a 2x8 gig kit of DDR4 2400 memory. That's a team kit and you know it's a very small picture there, but it's black and silver, so it'll look okay. And then we have our storage, of course. This is an 8ADA Premier SP550, 240 gig. It is an M.2 drive, but uh, it is SATA, so um, we have to make sure that our M.2 slot on the motherboard is compatible with SATA. A lot of them uh, will have legacy backward compatibility with SATA as well as compatibility with the uh, NVMe. Um, so just double check that the as or the Asus motherboard that we're using does. So for seventy dollars, uh, you know you don't have to worry about plugging in. SATA and power cables from your motherboard. Just slot it into your motherboard and you're good to go. Uh, 1070 Ti's, uh, you can actually get for MSRP right now. At least uh, $450 is what those were told to be selling for and that's what they actually sell for. So there you go. Um, you can save 30 bucks by getting a regular 1070 or you can spend $50 more and get a 1080. Uh, the NZXT S340, really solid case for a couple years now and um, just one that for $60 is hard to pass up. When I'm choosing cases, I know a lot of it comes down to aesthetics and what you like, but I try to choose cases that I know are reasonably well built and, and have good features to make the, the build process fairly simple. S340 is definitely one of those. And for 60 bucks with a $10 mail-in rebate from Newegg, uh, I think you probably can't go wrong. I chose the all black version, but it comes in a few different colors as well. Finally, our power supply. Again, the Corsair CXM uh, semi-modular. This is the same, well, not exactly the same unit, but uh, partially modular, all black cables, 650 watts, and it's 80 plus bronze rated, and it's only $60 on Amazon. So there you go, a nice solid power supply for your power delivery needs. And the last thing I wanted to do really quick was compare this build at $1,250 to two years ago. Two years ago, in November 2015, uh, I posted this video, my 
Uh, bang for the buck gaming rig and $200 mom and pop system, my November b builds uh, about two years ago. And in here, my $1,200 bang for the buck uh, gaming PC featured a i5 6600K, a Hyper 212 Plus, a GTX 980 Ti amp from Zotac, a Z170 Pro 4S ASRock motherboard, uh, 8 gigs, uh, 2x4 gig kit of memory, uh, 120 gig SSD and a Cooler Master case and a 650 watt power supply. So for about $1,200 a couple years ago, that's what we were looking at. If you're comparing that to like right now, here's here's that actual build and the price is wrong because a lot of these things aren't available anymore. But if you're comparing that to right now, it's a good example of why it kind of feels like the PC market with as exciting as it's been with all the product launches this year has overall remained somewhat stagnant when it comes to the actual price that you're paying. Compared to this system, you're I, uh, w comparing this system to the $1,250 system right now, you're getting a 7600K instead instead 7700K instead of a 6600K. So we've jumped up to hyper threading. You're getting roughly the same caliber of CPU cooler, motherboard, uh, you're getting twice as much memory, but it's for almost twice as much money, so that's not much of a difference. Uh, and you're getting a bit more capacity on the SSD, and you're getting a 1070 Ti instead of a 980 Ti for a bit less money. So there are some advancements that have happened that have made things a little bit more affordable here and there. But hopefully come 2018, we'll see NAND prices start to come down a bit more, so we'll actually get better pricing on both SSDs as well as memory. I think that combined with the competitive marketplace that the introduction of, Ry of Ryzen has created will get us to a point where we're gonna have some really good uh, budget PC options next year. For now, if you're buying in 2017 for the end of the year, definitely keep a close eye out for any of those last minute deals because there will be vendors trying to clear some stuff out. Uh, and then of course, leave any comments in the comment section you have down below if you found good deals or if you have other suggestions for variations of parts lists like the ones I've shared today. Share those with uh, the people reading the comments and maybe you'll help them out a little bit. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. Of course, links to all the uh, products and parts lists that I've talked about are in the video's description down below, and we'll see you next time.